Hi, and welcome back. We are here live coming at you from the AWS Sydney Summit in the middle of the Expo Hall. My name is Nikki. I'm a senior technical evangelist at AWS. You guys know me. Today we're going to be talking about an awesome migration to Fargate. But before we get started, some introductions, gentlemen. Shane, you want All to right. go first? Okay, so I'm Shane Baldacino, solution architect, and I think almost as important, co-host of the AWS Tech Chat podcast. So if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. And with us today, we have Kurt. Yeah, I'm Cloud Solution Architect with the Nib Group. Nib Group's a primarily health fund, but we've also got travel insurance, a few what different does NIB brands. What stand for? Nib used to be Newcastle Industrial Benefits. So it started as health insurance in Newcastle, but it's expanded a lot, particularly in recent years, adding travel insurance, a uh, few other corporate health insurance brands continuing to expand. So now the acronym just is just, it yeah, just is. Yeah, we've gone from NIB, uh, Newcastle Industrial Benefits to NIB Health Funds to now NIB Group. Wow. And uh, and what are you guys, uh, like, specific, what do you work on, on on AWS? What are you building on AWS? Yeah, Are okay. you working on the healthcare side or? So I'm Cloud Solution Architect. I'm lucky because I get to work across the group. I've been helping the last three or four years with the whole group starting to adopt public cloud services with a big focus on AWS. Mm. Uh, it means that we're helping develop the patterns to make deployments much easier to simplify how people build secure apps at scale that just work. That's awesome. So I hear you made like a massive migration from regular run-of-the-mill EC2 instances to Fargate. Yeah. What was the motivation behind that migration? And um, can you tell us a little bit about what your architecture looks like? Level set. You know, actually, what is Fargate? Uh, Absolutely, it's a great well, question. Well, there's many viewers <laughs> out here that you know maybe aren't familiar with Fargate. Yeah. yeah. So run, regular run-of-the-mill EC2 instances are going to be your virtual machines if you're not familiar, and Fargate is going to be serverless containers. So. You can set up your own infrastructure and run containers yourself, or you can have Fargate do all the work for you, which is exactly what I think your, your part of the motivation was. So what was your architecture? What did it look like before you moved? So and I've then what, and talk about a little bit about how you moved. Great slide just here, if we can bring it up. Yeah, let's bring yep. up the slide. So we've been doing this for three or four years. We're using AWS ECS, which is their elastic container service. Basically, it's a way to say, hey, I've got this workload. It uses a thing called Docker. It's basically encapsulating your application and the runtime. And ECS just knows how to put that on these virtual machines, or EC2. It is our container yeah. orchestrator. But um, you know, yep. there's still container orchestration and management that you need to do. In that yeah, model. absolutely. You're still managing the clusters, the instances. And this is what we've been doing for three or four years. So we're building these hardened images. We're helping publish that out to a growing number of AWS accounts. And then our clusters have to pick these up. They're registering with vulnerability scanners, endpoint protection, et cetera. There's quite a lot of complexity in this, which means there's quite a lot of failure modes, things yep. do go wrong. Absolutely. So that was part of the motivation behind. Yeah, totally. So moving to Fargate, it's um, to use a trope in the architecture team. It's moving up the value chain. It's basically uh, look, there's a whole bunch of phrases like undifferentiating, heavy lifting. It's basically abstraction. things that yeah, abstraction. High value versus low value. Yeah, it's things that We're don't bring value to the right customer right correctly. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great when you're talking to management because it gives a real why and it helps sell the the value that you bring. But the idea is to free up the staff from troubleshooting these things, the APIs that change Less without. Less work. That's a huge selling warning. point. Exactly. This is serverless for Docker containers, effectively. So what was involved in that process of migrating this infrastructure so to Fargate? We had a whole bunch of abstractions, so this will be a little different for most customers, but for us, it was really changing a couple of lines of code. Uh, it was okay. as simple as that. Yeah, that's unusual, that's normal. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that just throw it back, normal. just throw it back. <laughs> I might hit the camera, maybe hey, after. Hey, so, you know, got a bit of a question, I guess, uh, from the Twitch users out there. So, Nefta asks, you know, are there situations where ECS potentially may be a better use case than Fargate? So, we're still using ECS. Fargate is just managing the clusters. So, Fargate is a launch type of ECS. Yes. Um, if you do not choose Fargate, you are setting up and maintaining those EC2 instances yourself, which means you're in control of that infrastructure. Um, if you're choosing Fargate, you do not necessarily have control of that underlying infrastructure, but it is both, you know, it's usually a benefit, right? I do not want to have that control. I'm going to trust that AWS has got my back on this, and I'm just going to set up my containers and orchestration, um, and I don't need to have necessarily control of the host that my containers are running on. And you don't just have to rely on trust. It does have a number of attestations, so you can request from AWS the 
compliance certificates yeah. that will tell you the measures they put in for security, etc. So you can have that level of assurance that they're doing all the things that are quite difficult to automate if you're a smaller shop or even a medium large enterprise. Yeah. And I think you know some of the other benefits on the Fargate side, you know. Not having to worry about scaling your ECS cluster or EKS cluster, and you know, absolutely. not just specific to ECS here. You know, the, the wider gamut here. As you mentioned, you know, it is absolutely elevating up the value chain yeah. for, I guess, NAB stuff. Important just point there, a lot Shane. Of work. Important point was it also works with EKS. So Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes service, yep. I think it is, you got it. a way of running Kubernetes, and it will build the host for you. So once again, you're not managing the SSH keys, the vulnerability scanners, the endpoint protection, etc. Uh, this screen I've got up here, it's still the same ECS that we were using before, but instead of seeing one or two EC2 instances, we now just see one Fargate. And when you go into the EC2 console, which this should look familiar for AWS users, no instances. So I've never show. seen this before, Kurt. Wow, yeah, no beautiful. Instances. That's really nice. This is the future, people. This is the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so joking. I guess since we're talking about you know having that granular control, was it hard for you and the team to let go of that granular control of the host instances um, that the containers were originally running on, or were you like overjoyed at the newfound abstraction? So for me, I was overjoyed. I built a lot of the hardening code. I've had to troubleshoot this time and time again, and it doesn't matter how resilient you make your infrastructure at some point things will change. If you're patching, it will change an API, your mm. version's becoming incompatible. Absolutely. I was so excited with this. There are people that resist it. We've had people still ask, how do I SSH in? The answer is always don't. It's more secure that way. Uh, we're really trying to push yeah. the stateless 12-factor yep. app style concepts. It is a bit of a cultural change, but this is a good way to sort of get into yeah. it. What about the rest of the team? Was did, it, did you have any difficulties like convincing certain members of the team or everybody was just like overjoyed immediately? No, there's still people coming on board, if I'm honest. That cultural change is slow, but I would expect that in 12 months we'll have reduced the number of incidents we're seeing and everyone will just be comfortable. It'll be the new normal. What's, what is your strategy or technique for onboarding those individuals or convincing them to come to the Fargate side? So it's very much about picking the, the apps that are lower risk yeah. first. So start with the lower things, prove that it works, give Got them it. examples, show them the benefits, and just keep doing that. And as we gradually increase it, and in the architecture space, we've done this a lot with all of the AWS tech, build a few examples, and as people have to start maintaining or building new versions of it, they really start to get an understanding and comfort with the technology. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you see a trend. I, I can't speak for the U.S. market, Nikki, but definitely in Australia, you know, companies are moving towards that no ops model. Uh, yeah, it's happening in America, too, at a fast pace, too. I, I would agree it's a huge trend. Um, no ops is, is better. No, no <laughs> ops is just, yeah, it is, it is awesome. And I think, um, I don't know if this was a driver for yourself, you know, recently at the start of the year, there was a huge, significant price reduction in Fargate. And that's yes. probably accelerated a lot of the drive um, in the domestic market here from EC2 or, you know, maybe customers were holding out, you know. I know I've got customers, yep, maybe yeah, Kurt was holding out. out, you know. Do we go from EC2 to EKS, ECS? Yep. Or do we make that generational, we skip that entire generation and make them move over to Fargate? And, you know, with Are that... 50% price reduction earlier this year. I think it was like January yeah, or yeah, something 50, like that. Yeah, 50, 60%. And 50, 60. honestly, that was a big trigger for us. Before that, we'd done the numbers, and even considering TCO, we'd done all the automation already, so there was no investment there. It was just maintenance. Uh, if you're looking to invest and build this automation yourself, I'd yeah. say definitely try Fargate, uh, and doubly so now with the price reduction. So. Are you halfway done through the migration, all the way done? Where are you in the process? Still fairly early days. I mean, we still have older stacks running that are different technologies, yeah. uh, full servers running a bit more natively. So there's still a migration path for those apps. Uh, the Docker workloads are coming across nicely. We may have had a few missteps here and there where we copied the wrong command in, but generally it's going well. So the outcome has been great thus far. Yeah, yep, totally positive. And, and those original team members that might have been opposed are now like on board? Uh, still coming along. Getting but there? yeah, getting uh, look, we're getting a growing body of people that are getting comfortable with this. And I think it's, it's definitely in the majority now. Um, there's always going to be skeptics, and they're good because they keep you honest. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, in terms of build pipelines and tooling, has it made much of a change? 
No, so we've made it opt-in initially, and it's literally a one-line change where for our tooling you write launch type Fargate, yep. Yep. and we've made it so it's seamless, so next time you deploy, we'll simply just create a new cluster and you'll no longer have EC2 instances. Simple. Yeah, awesome. Incredible. Less less pets to manage, and totally. you know, feed and water, and um, you know, keep them online and running. Yeah, and fewer failure modes. Like I said, every time we spun up these clusters, it's calling out to things. Uh, every time an API changes, you start getting these strange failures that you have to troubleshoot, you have to roll out fixes. All of that starts to go away. It's awesome. I mean, it's incredible just the change that is made once you switch over to a no op situation. Looks like we have a question from Steve the Mage. What is the underlying host operating system with Fargate? Um, it is go It is Linux uh, right now. And uh, hopefully we will support both operating systems in the near future. True, there's no Windows support for Fargate just yet, but it might be coming and Amazon are very responsive to customer yeah, demand, so like definitely put a plus one. Windows containers, like even being a Microsoft guy, um, it's a bit of an oxymoron at times. Like, to be fair, we do have people running .NET Core in Docker containers, Core and that is, works amazing. I think that is the future. It is yeah. the uh, you know multi-plus cross-platform yeah. uh, future, but yeah. Well, yeah, Microsoft yeah. also you know has come out and basically said that it is the future it in is. so many ways. So, um, if customers wanted to see how they can get started with this architecture. Is there any places that you found online that they could go? True. Or? So Amazon has a new thing called CDK, Cloud Development Kit. It's built for programmers that want to spin up infrastructure and deploy their application. It's got some great quick start guides for spinning up uh, Fargate. It'll even build you the load balances to make sure that you can have multiple instances. Really good way to proof of concept the technology. Um, I'm going to drop the link for you guys in the so chat. So I guess a lot of the I guess questions that customers often grapple with is, Containers or serverless. Like, you know, wearing my developer hat, I would probably always my de facto response starting point would be I'm going to write a serverless function to do this or create a state machine. Now, I get serverless doesn't fit every use case. There may be legacy applications, etc. But, you know, when would you use serverless versus containers? So we have a lot of apps that are already in containers and we're still getting people comfortable with serverless. For me, serverless is, uh, it's a move to event-driven model. So it's, it's a different mindset for the developers. So it takes a bit longer to get people across to it. Like you said, there's other workloads. So you might be running machine learning or something that is just really hard to pack into the limits of Lambda. Things like that are great for Fargate. We've got jobs that were written for our on-premise that run for maybe an hour. Yep. So things like that are great in a Fargate task. That way it spins up the tasks, Fargate manages all the hosts, it can scale yep. up, scale out. Bam, it's done. Pay for what you right. use is the key. So if somebody wanted to join the team at NIV and, and help you with this migration, True. how could they do so? so and are you hiring? We're regularly hiring IT staff. I'm not sure what we've got up, but I think we're going to drop the link in the channel. Uh, always keen to chat, so reach out on LinkedIn or Twitter, and I'm sure we'll have a look around and see what's there. We're now in a number of different cities as we've expanded. We've got Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, Newcastle's still the head office. We've even got an office in Ireland. We've got people wow. uh, in places like Manila. So global, you're everywhere, so in company. Fun question here for you, Nikki. How tall are you? So Kiki No <laughs> is asking, how tall are you? I answered, I'm five two. So <laughs> what is that in, uh, I guess, uh, metric units here? You know, I used to have a box, but they don't have my box this week. So you got to deal with me at this height. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for telling us about your migration to Fargate. Uh, it was really interesting uh, hearing about maybe the different challenges and the benefits to migrating to Fargate. Really appreciate you joining us today. We'll be back with more content soon. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you all soon. Thanks gotcha. for having me.